So let me tell you what we're going to be doing in this class. We're going to be doing pretty much everything on the camera. We'll start off with some few basics. I want to talk to some of the newer photographers about what type of camera and sensor and a setting or two that's really important to get started with. And then we get into the good stuff. We're going to talk about the exposure system and all the different controls you have for getting the right exposure. Then we have a lot of new things to talk about in the focusing section. And so there's be some interesting things in there. The drive mode has a lot of controls in there for controlling how you capture your images. Then we're going to take a tour of the camera looking at the remaining buttons and dials to see what they do. We'll take a look at the different options you have for the viewfinder and the LCD monitor on the back of the camera. The quick menu has a lot of the very quick controls that you can get to for changing settings. We're going to take a long look at all the different movie controls and there's a lot of new options in here. We'll take a look at everything that plugs in and hooks up to the camera through the camera connections. We'll take a quick look at the Fuji film lenses and some uh, recommendations I might have for you in there. And then the remainder of the class is where we go through the menu system. There are a number of tabs and we're going to go through each one of those tabs to let you know how to set up each of the different items in there. And then finally we end up with the field setup guide which is where I talk about how I would actually set the camera up in the real world and what sort of settings I'd be changing and what I might be looking for to, uh, to get the camera set up in the best mode possible. So that is your complete camera guide for this class. We're going to be uh, covering pretty much every nook and cranny that this camera has to offer. Now, as we go through this class, I'm going to be referring to things that are going to happen later on in the class in the menu. Uh, so if you want to go through and you want to make an adjustment in the menu, well, you can take a look at this menu reference box and it's going to give you a little shortcut where to go in the menu to make that little change. And this is where the PDF that you get with the purchase of the class comes in handy. Because in here, there is the entire menu laid out on a few different pages. And uh, on top of that, I also give you some recommendations where I think a good starting point for getting the camera set up. I also have some duplicate pages without recommendations so you can put your own recommendations or your own notes in there. There's a few other things in here that are going to be from the class that are kind of complicated slides you might say so that you can have them in printed version uh, for additional reference here. And so this is something you can print out or you can view electronically. And as I say, that comes with the full purchase of the class. Now, as we go along later on in the class, I might refer back to an earlier section of the class where I fully described a particular feature. I try not to repeat myself and talk about the same thing over and over. Yes, there are a couple of exceptions, but I think it's an important special case there. Uh, so just feel free to go back and view earlier sections if necessary. Generally speaking, the class is designed to be watched from beginning to end the first time around, and then subsequent watches just watch whatever section you need to watch. All right, so this class is on the Fujifilm X-T5 camera. There's a lot of things that are very important to taking great photographs, and we're only covering what is directly working with this particular camera. And so lighting, composition, and a variety of other things are very important. We're just concentrating on what this camera does and how it applies to photography. Now, this camera has a lot of great things, arguably more than most camera in kind of fun modes where it does something goofy or different and has a unique look to the image. And Fuji's great at this, and I think that's wonderful, and I'm going to show you how to do it. But I really want to teach you how to operate the camera to do things manually and how to get the highest quality images possible out of there. We'll talk about some of those other things, but this is really what I'm going to be concentrating on throughout the remainder of this class. And finally, I don't know if you know this, but I don't know what you know and what you don't know. And I have a lot of people in my classes, and some of them are very advanced photographers, and some of them are more beginner photographers. And so I'm generally going to explain things so most people can figure things out. And so if you're on the more knowledgeable side of things, uh, just have a little bit of patience. I just want to cover a few of the basics to make sure that everyone is up to speed on this camera. Now, there is an instruction booklet that comes with this camera. It's reasonable in length, 400 pages. I've seen some instruction manuals that are over a thousand. 
And this class is not designed to completely replace that instruction manual. There's still some important things in this manual, um, some detailed specifications, compatibility issues. There's sometimes features that when you have one thing turned on, other things are not available. And this will have more information about that in there. I am trying to cover what most photographers are going to encounter most of the time. And so for most people, this class is probably all you'll need, but the instruction manual is something that may still be handy uh, to reference at some other points. All right, let's talk a little bit about Fuji. So Fuji has been around for a long time and officially, yes, it is Fuji film. Uh, they've had a number of different cameras. They have maybe one of the most interesting history when it comes to the types of cameras that they made. Many years ago when I worked in the camera shop, I was running the medium format department and I would work with Fujifilm cameras there because we had all sorts of interesting point and shoot, SLR, studio cameras, uh, very interesting things from Fuji. They've made some great cameras over the years. They have a fantastic history in both lenses and in cameras and they've got a great collection of cameras going now, that is for sure. So the X-T5 here is part of their mirrorless digital camera system, kind of their base most popular system. And we've got a lot of different bodies and a lot of different lenses that are available. They also make compact cameras and they do particularly well with the premium compact cameras like the X100V. They're also very popular in the world of instant film cameras. And so if you're looking for an instant film camera, Fuji's got the best thing going out there. Now they also make medium format cameras. And if you want the absolute highest in quality, you do landscape, product photography, a variety of other types of photography as well. Uh, they make a medium format system with a much larger sensor and a completely different set of lenses for that. Now, as far as the X series, which this is a part of, we have a wide range of different cameras that are available and a large collection of lenses. The cameras are kind of interesting because they don't exactly follow the way other manufacturers make cameras. A lot of times manufacturers will make um, a low end, a middle end, a high end, and various models kind of in a very vertical column of uh, this is the best and this is the cheapest. And with Fuji, they make some cameras that are not clearly the flagship camera, is it or is it not? Right now, for instance, they have two different XH models. And the H is a little bit more of a hybrid shooting camera designed a little bit more favorably towards people shooting video. They're still great stills camera. Uh, but just a little bit more easy to shoot with if you are shooting video. X-T5 is very much focused on still photography, although there are a ton of video controls. And the difference between this and the X-H2 is actually pretty small when it comes to the actual feature differences when you are shooting video. The X-Pro3 is another professional level top grade camera. And so they have three or four different top level cameras, but they're geared for different types of photography. I think travel photography is one of the best cases for this, but anyone who just likes general photography. For me, this reminds me of some of my old Nikons, the FM2 and FE2 and F3 cameras with the shutter speed dials on the top. And so I like that retro style. I think that's very nice among everything else that it has going for it. All right, now for those of you who are upgrading from the X-T4 to the X-T5, we've got a number of changes in here. We've got the higher resolution sensor. It doesn't really change the basic operation of the camera, but there is an important note when it comes to what lenses you are using. That is something we'll talk more about in the section on lenses. It is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. It's a little bit closer to the X-T3 and the X-T2 in size and weight. There is a new AF subject detection mode. We'll talk more about that in section nine. There is a new multi-shot high-res mode for getting really high resolution images. We'll talk about that in section five. They've gone back to a three-way tilting screen, which is a little bit easier for still photographers, not as good for video, especially if you're trying to shoot yourself. But I think for the targeted crowd for this, it's perfect. There is a lot more and better video options and we're going to be talking about those a lot in sections 9 and section 16. The in-body stabilization system, the IBIS system, has been improved over the X-T4, not by a lot, but just by a little bit. Now, unusually, they have not supplied, or they don't have as, a, as an available option, 
the vertical battery grip. So on the previous versions of the XT camera, there was a battery grip you could get on the bottom of it to put two batteries in. And this was very handy for people shooting video because video would go through the batteries more quickly. Um, there was also some performance boosting that you could get with previous uh, cameras, and that's not really necessary on this one. So uh, a little bit more focused on the still photographer, but as I say, a lot of great video options in here as well. As far as the Karen handling on this camera, it's very similar to previous cameras. Uh, officially, they don't want you using this camera near water, like a wet basement or a swimming pool. I like to pull strange things from the instruction manual. It proves that I actually read it. And do not use this in the presence of explosive gases. I don't know exactly if you should be doing anything in the presence of explosive gases, but don't use this camera um, or probably any camera. Um, and then, of course, one of my favorite is uh, if the product may fall, causing injuries to child or adults. So don't drop this on people or things. It's not going to be good for the camera or the other things. Uh, more seriously, the construction of the camera. Uh, magnesium alloy body on this. It's a pretty rugged camera. It's going to be something that should be able to withstand a lot of fairly rugged use. When it comes specifically to the weather sealing on it, it is dust and moisture resistant. They test it down to some very low temperatures. It's got a lot of different weather seal points. If, however, you are in a very heavy downpour, I would not use this camera out in that uh, for a long period of time. Also be aware that some lenses have better weather sealing than other lenses, so you may want to take a look at your lenses and rubber seals, uh, look at information about those particular lenses to see how good they are. I think it's fine in a light rain or with a splash of water. Uh, it is not an underwater camera. Uh, if you're going to go whitewater rafting, do not go through big class five rapids with this unexposed. You'd probably want to get some sort of housing for it in that case. It looks like they have upped the quality of their shutter in here because it is now good for a supposed life cycle of 500,000, which is the longest I have seen of any camera uh, made out there. This is on par with the five and $6,000 cameras from Nikon, Canon, and some other manufacturers. This is the very top of the line when it comes to the shutter quality and durability. So uh, it should be a camera that can last you many, many, many years. All right, so let's make sure your camera and my camera is ready for today's class. We're going to need a charged battery, and that can take anywhere from three to 10 hours. And we're going to talk more about the USB charging on this, because starting with the X-T4 and here included with the X-T5, Fuji does not supply a battery charger, which I'm not very fond of. You need to plug in a USB cord into the side of the camera to power it. Now, depending on what type of cord you have and depending on what it's plugged into, uh, and its settings, it may be a very fast charge or it may be a very slow charge. With the supplied cable and the supplied power adapter, it's going to be very quick. But if you're powering off a computer, it can vary according to those other things. Uh, you're going to need a lens on there because we're going to take some practice photos in the class here, uh, which means you'll also need a memory card in there. Go ahead and turn your camera on. And uh, this isn't a review, but every once in a while, um, there's some things that bother me about the camera and just want to let you know. Uh, the on and off switch does not have as much of an indent on it for you to grab your finger on compared to previous XT cameras. And so if it feels a little bit more slippery, it's good and bad in the sense that um, it's harder to accidentally turn on or turn off, but it requires just a little bit more intentional force when you are turning it on or turning it off, which is Probably for the best, I'm still getting used to it for myself. All right, now there is a still in movie mode right below the shutter speed dial. There's a little lever that you can turn back and forth to adjust for that. And this is something that we're going to be working with in the movie mode during particular times. But for right now, we're going to want to have it in the stills mode. Now on your lens is an aperture. And some lenses have a slider switch. Some lenses you just turn to the A. And so in this one, I'm going to turn my lens to the A for automatic setting. And so I'm just putting the camera into a full automatic mode now. Next thing is going to be to change the shutter speed dial to A, which means shutter speeds will be automatically set for you. And then we can go ahead and make sure on the front of the camera, the dial is set to S. 
And so on our camera, we have a little dial here on the front, and this controls the focusing system. And if we set it over here, we're going to set it to S for single shot, which means we can take one single shot. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is press down on the shutter release. Camera will focus. Camera will figure out shutter speeds and apertures because they're an automatic. My camera seems to be working. Hopefully yours is as well. If not, go get that battery charged. Go get a memory card to put in your camera for the rest of the class. Now, one of the important things I want to take care of right here at the beginning is the firmware. Firmware is the software that runs the operation of the camera. And from time to time, Fuji makes updates to their firmware. Looking back over the last 10 years with Fuji, they used to do more firmware updates and they tend to be doing a little less now. Uh, so it's not something that is changing on a monthly basis like it was at one point, it seemed like. So the way that you check to see if you have firmware is you turn the camera off, you press down on the display back button on the back of the camera while you are turning the camera on, and it will show you what firmware you have. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do this. So I'm going to turn my camera off, and I'm going to press down on the display back button, and turn the camera on and it takes just a kind of an extra second here and this shows you that we have a firmware for the body of 1.03 now there is also firmware for the lenses and don't worry about what mine says because you may have a different lens um, this is uh, the 16 to 80 just in case you're curious we're worried about the body version it's 1.03 so that means that since this camera has come out they've made a couple of minor, probably bug fixes uh, in those. If it was a more significant update, it would be 1.1 or it might be 2.0 if it was a really big update. And I don't know what they're going to do in the future. I suspect they will do a few firmware updates uh, in the future. If they do something significant, I'll have to come back and make it a little addendum for this class if there's major feature differences that really change the operation of the camera. Now, if you want the latest firmware, what you need to do is you need to go online to find Fuji's website. Just look up X-T5 firmware. Go to the official Fujifilm company website to download the firmware, which you put on a memory card, put that card in the camera, and then go through the same process of pressing the display back button, turning the camera on. Use slot one for the firmware updates and generally I like to reformat my memory cards before I put the firmware on the memory card and then once I've done the firmware update before I go shoot photos I don't want to have that sitting on there it potential that it could cause a communication error with the camera I haven't personally experienced it but it's just one of the safety protocols that I think is a good practice for everyone when you are doing your firmware updates once you get them all done then you can just turn the camera off and then you can turn the camera back on and you're ready to go again. Next up, I want to make sure that our cameras are kind of all on the same playing field, you might say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reset on the camera. And so I've been playing around with my camera, doing lots of button changes and stuff. And I want to get my camera set back to the way it is when you get it new out of the box. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a reset. Now, if you go into the setup menu, there's going to be a couple of reset options. You can reset the still menu, the movie menu, or the setup menu if you just want to target a certain area to reset. But I'm going to do an initialize, uh, which really takes it all the way back to the factory default settings. And so let's go ahead and get that done now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into the menu. And you can go left and right with the selector here. And you can go up and down. And we're going to come down to the wrench setting and come over to the user setting. And we're gonna come in here and go down to page two. There's two pages. You can see up there, there's one of two. And we have our reset. So we come in here and we can reset the still, the movie, the setup menu. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the initialize. So I'm gonna to go to the right. You see a little arrow to the right there. And do we want to initialize? We're gonna say, okay. And it's going to take everything back. And so now I need to choose a language. I'm going to work with English for this class. And this is where you can go in and set the date and time. I'm going to go ahead and set my location, which is there on the West Coast. And I am going to worry about the rest of the stuff between uh, our classes here. I'm not going to waste your time setting the time correctly. But go ahead and get that set correctly on yours if you want. 
So once we've got that all set up and we've got the firmware checked, we know that we're all playing with the same deck of cards, you might say. And so there you go, folks. That's our introduction section for the X-T5. We're going to cover a few basics and then we're going to get into some serious stuff on this camera.